wherefore, O king, let my counsel, let my message, let my exhortation, let my instruction be acceptable unto thee. Don't, don't shift this one aside. Don't toss it aside. Don't wave it aside as if this is Charles Top, the most high in heaven, has made a decree. His judgment is coming. But there's something you can do about that. And therefore, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee and break off thy sins by righteousness. Turn. Repent. Let there be a change. Let there be a turning around that will break off your separate from your sins. And when you repent, then have a new life. Let there be righteousness and thine iniquities. No, don't just confess and forsake. Only one iniquity. Only the unfavorable iniquities. But all iniquities, let them be taken away by showing mercy, throwing them into the fire, repent of that, and do whatever you want to do, and being filled with violence, and being filled with cruelty, and not looking at the poverty of the people, the weakness of the women folk, and uh, the weakness of the children, and you just say that you are in love by yourself, and the evil you want to do to torment anyone, whether a child or an adult, a woman or a man, the poor or the rich, anyone, just to show how mighty and powerful you are. All those iniquities, toss them aside and cast them away by showing mercy to the poor. It may be a lightning of thy tranquility. That is, your peace might continue. If you will repent, the Lord might bring you into his everlasting kingdom and there might be a change, there might be a transformation. Your repentance might bring restoration into the favor of God, restoration into regeneration, a new life, a new approach to life. Your repentance might make you to be a favorite of God, just like we are being reconciled to God. You too might be reconciled unto God. And that's what we're telling every sinner, that the sinner will repent. Otherwise, judgment is coming. That the backslider should repent. Otherwise, judgment is coming. That the one that doesn't regard God, does not uh, obey God, and does not go the direction of God, that he will repent, and you will break off your iniquity and your sin by righteousness, by repentance, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ who has been sent to reconcile us with God. And now how could Daniel tell him that it could be the lengthening of thy tranquility? Because in Jeremiah chapter 18, we're reading from verse 7, Jeremiah chapter 18 verse 7, at what instant I shall speak concerning a nation or concerning a kingdom to pluck it up to bring judgment and to pull it down and to destroy it at what instant I look at a kingdom, I look at a king, I look at a dominion, I, I look at the emperor and I said, judgment has come, I'll pluck it up, I'll pull it down, I'll destroy it. Look at verse 8, in verse 8, a bad nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil. That's the way of God. That's the mercy of God. And that is the plan of God. He wants sinners to repent. He doesn't want sinners to perish. He wants the sinners to repent. And if that sinner will turn from his evil, if that king and that emperor, that monarch will turn from his evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought I will do you unto them. He says, have not, even though it's a decree from heaven, repentance can change all that decision and decree of the Lord. But look at the other side of the coin. In verse 9, in verse 9, it says, at what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom. 
to build it and to plant it. Look at verse 10. It says, if he do evil in my sight. If he says, God has spoken good concerning me. God has spoken well concerning me. He loves me and God is love. And he's going to bless me. And he said he will bless me if that person will take the grace of God for granted, the love of God for, for granted, the promise of God for granted, if he do evil in my sight, that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I would benefit them. You see, the God of righteousness, the God of holiness, the holy, 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 is the Lord our God. He loves holiness. He desires holiness. He walks with holiness. And if anyone will turn away from the holiness and turn away from the righteous and take the promise of God and take the love of God and the mercy of God for granted, judgment will come. Look at Jonah. Jonah chapter 3, we're looking at verse 4. In Jonah chapter 3, reading from verse 4, and Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, Yea, forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, so the people of Nineveh believed God. They believed the threatenings of God. They believed that the punishment will actually come. They didn't take the announcement, the proclamation, the preaching, the exhortation, and the announcement, prophetic announcement of Jonah for granted. It said the people of Nineveh believed and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them, even to the least of them. Look at verse 6, and the verse 6 says, For what came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him, and covered him with sackcloth and such in ashes. Look at verse 7. In verse 7 it says, And he caused it to be proclaimed, announced, uh, and published uh, through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor bees hurt, nor blood taste anything. Let them not feed, nor drink water. Look at verse 8. In verse 8 it says, But let man and bees be covered or sackcloth, and cry mightily unto God. Ye. Let them turn everyone from is evil way. He, he called the whole people, the whole city, the whole nation uh, to repentance. And he says, let them turn. They didn't just hear the word. Okay, Jonah said what he wants to say. That's a decree from heaven. And God is God. And whatever God wants to do, let him, he wants to judge us. He wants to throw us away. He wants to throw us to hell. Okay, let him do what he wants to do and become defiant and disobedient. No, he said, truly, we have been wicked, we have been evil, we have been sinful, and now the day of judgment has come, and the day of grace is passing. Because of that, he says, let everyone turn from the evil of his way and from the violence that is in their hand. In verse 9, he says, who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not. Have you ever considered that? That we perish not. Have you ever thought about that in your life? That we perish not. Have you ever thought the day of grace might be long? But one day it will come to an end. And if you continue in evil, if you continue in violence, if you continue in sinfulness, if you continue in defiance, in disobedience against the Lord, that day will not be forever. The day of grace will come to an end and then 
where will you be in eternity? If you died in sin, where will you spend eternity? They said, let us repent, let us turn away from every evil in our hand that we perish not. Look at verse 10, in verse 10, and God saw their works, and God saw their repentance that they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them. And he did it not. God is a God of mercy if we repent, if we turn. And if we come before him and we say, Lord, we're sorry, and we sincerely say that with the intention, with the decision, we will not go in the way of our righteousness anymore, and we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ who died for us, and who took our pain, who took our punishment, it became our substitute, and then because of his blood, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Forgiveness is available to those who repent. Regeneration, renewal is available for those who turn from their evil ways, Nebuchadnezzar did not act on the exhortation, on the counsel, on the instruction of Daniel. And 12 months after, the judgment came upon him. We will not be like Nebuchadnezzar. I will not be like Nebuchadnezzar. Turn to the Lord, and the mercy of the Lord will be abundant upon your life in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now and pray to the Lord that the Lord himself will see the repentance and then there will be a restoration to the goodness of God in every life. Pray. The Lord wants to hear you pray and the Lord will have favor upon you. Oh, thanks be to God for tonight. We bless the name of the Lord for the great and the wonderful revelation of mighty reminder, of reproof of our true spiritual state. And thank be to God for the restoration that is calling us unto. Thank be to God for the renewal that is bringing us unto. He wants us to be on the level of righteousness. And we should leave every works of the flesh, every power of the enemy. God is against the proud. God receives the proud and he give grace unto the humble. The Lord will destroy the house of the proud. Therefore, everyone today must look inward. Look into your life. Look into your conduct. Look at what you are doing and check and see if there's any iota of pride there. Pride destroy. Pride abase people. Pride brings people down. Therefore, we must not allow pride to come into our life. Pride to be part of our life. Pride to destroy all. Everyone that is proud in the heart is an abomination to the Lord. Therefore, God is against the proud. God is working against the, the proud. God is not happy with the proud. Oh, they will definitely be punished one day on the other. Therefore, for the flesh lusted against the spirit, and the spirit against the spirit, against the flesh, and these two, they are against one another. Therefore, because of this, each one must look inward to today and see which one is ruling, which one is directing. Is it the spirit? Is it the flesh? We must look at it carefully. The spirit can be willing and the flesh can be weak but today you can ask for the strength of the Lord and you can ask the Lord to help you recognize what is making you to be proud what is the root of your pride what is it that is making you not to be where God wants you to be you must know it you must appropriate it you must accept it today is it your wisdom is it your position is it your beauty? Is it your riches? Is it your achievement? Is it your knowledge that is giving you superiority complex? To look down on other people, not recognizing the other people, not accepting the other people, not allowing the other people 
to have self-respect for themselves. And you are looking down on them as if they are not created by God. Dearly beloved, it is time for everyone to look inward and to look into our lives one after the other and be sure that we are not proud in our life. We are not proud by anything that we have because the flesh is against the spirit. Oh yes, it's fighting against the spirit and the spirit is fighting against the, the flesh. Therefore, the spirit can be willing and the flesh can be weak. We must look at it and be sure that we flush it out. We don't allow the flesh to rule over the spirit. We don't allow what is around us to rule over our lives. Whatever it is that the enemy has used in the time past, today we are saying no more. Today we are saying it should no more be in place in my life. Resist the fleshly lust. Therefore, discover the pride. You must discover it. As you discover it, dethrone the pride. Not only that, deny the pride. Therefore, defeat the pride. As you pray today and seek the face of God today and tell God today, enough is enough. No, this thing cannot be. This is not your will. Hide it not. Expose it and oppose it. Fight it in all forms, in all shades, that it may be manifesting in your life, in your activities, in your relationship with people. Let us fight it today, wonderfully and gloriously. And remember, it is spiritual experience of sanctification that will give us victory over the flesh, over the attraction of the evil. Therefore, today, we must consecrate, not only consecrate, we must come to the Lord to crucify all the works of the devil, all the power of the devil. And this is one of them, pride. Reveal it. Don't hide it anymore. Rebuke it. Don't allow it to remain. Resist it. Oh, don't, let's go, move forward and remove it from yourself and refrain from it. Determine today that a new chapter will begin in your life. A wonderful chapter will begin in your life. A glorious chapter will begin in your life. God's punishment is sure on all the proud. Adam and Eve, they were proud. They wanted to be like God. That was what the enemy presented unto them in the garden. As a result of that, they lost the garden. Therefore, everyone that is here, that is hearing this, that have heard the word of God tonight, repent of the pride of your life. Repent of the loss of the flesh. Repent of the evil. All you have, all that you are, they are given by God. So there is no room for anybody to be proud. Therefore, today, make sure you come out of every form of pride. And remember also that we have been enjoyed today to preach the word of God, to declare the word of God, and to say it as it is, uncompromisingly. The gospel must be preached with faithfulness. The gospel must be preached with fearlessness. The gospel must be preached with forthrightness. The gospel must be preached without any respect of person. We must preach it as it is. We must declare sin as sin without colorating sin or belittling sin or making sin to look attractive in any way. We must call it sin. We must call it unrighteousness. We must make sure that the sinners are called to repentance. The backsliders are called to repentance. We must say as it is, call sin, sin, and call people to genuine repentance. And without any evil, no respect of person with God, oh, no partiality with God, and the gospel that we preach also must be gospel that is not given respect to any person. Declare it as it is. Tell the sinner that he must be born again. Tell the backslider he must come back unto the kingdom. And by the grace of God, the Lord will help us. The Lord will stand by us. The Lord will raise us up. And by the grace of God, we shall be what God wants us to be in the name of Jesus. 
by the grace of God from July 27 to August 1. God helping us. There will be the July edition of GCK in Obomosho in Oyo State. By the grace of God, the man of God will be going there. Let us pray for the journey mercies. Let us pray that the Lord will go with him. Let us pray that the power of God will go with him. Let us pray for fresh anointing. Let us pray for anointing that will be global, that will be able to do more than ever unprecedented anointing, unprecedented revelation, unprecedented power, unprecedented physical and spiritual strength. That the Lord will go with the man of God. That the power of the Lord will go with the man of God. That every word that will come out of him will mean miracle. It will mean solution. And it will draw people and their heart and their life unto the Lord in heaven. Signs and wonders will be done. Glorious thing will be done. Marvelous thing will be done. Divine thing will be done. Glorious thing will be done. And people will rejoice and go home with the joy of the Lord in their heart. Brethren, let us pray for the man of God. Brethren, let us leave the man of God.
mighty grand, your office and displayed. For these are prayers of gratitude to the same. Let's proclaim His majesty. 